everybody and welcome to St John's this morning. It is really, really great to be able to welcome you today, whether you're watching with us here on Zoom. Give me a wave if you're here on Zoom. I can see some of your beautiful faces already. If you're watching on Facebook or if you're watching later on YouTube, we're really, really glad that you're with us. Uh, my name is Joy and I'm Vicar here at St John's and this morning we're going to do lots of different things. We're going to hear from some different people, we're going to worship God together, we're going to pray together and uh, we're going to hear from his word. So I'm really looking forward to everything that is going to be a part of this morning's worship. Now we are in the middle of Lent and uh, for those who've been following through these last few weeks we've been talking about Arise Sheffield. So Arise Sheffield which is a movement of churches coming together right across Sheffield to pray together, to uh, prayer walk all of the streets of Sheffield. It's a bold aspiration but if you have a little look on the app you'll see that lots and lots of people have been prayer walking already and loads and loads of our communities and our streets have been prayed for but it's just brilliant to be able to get out there and pray for our city so please do get involved in that we're also later in the month going to be giving out easter eggs and we're going to hopefully be decorating some of our windows and we know that easter cards are going to be going out from arise to every household in Sheffield. Now next week we're going to be speaking during our service to Ben Woolard who is uh, the director of Together for Sheffield and who is coordinating a rise right across the city. So uh, anything that you'd like to know about a rise let us know in the next week and we can make sure that we ask Ben. So I'm really looking forward to welcome him, welcoming him next week but in the meantime let's uh, get out there and be praying for our streets and uh, for our communities. Okay, after the service today, we've got Kids Church happening on Zoom. So uh, if you're a young person, uh, an, a junior school or an infant school aged person, you are really welcome to join in with Kids Church on Zoom and your parents should have all the information about how to do that. But if you're a parent and uh, you don't know how to do that, please let us know on the chat and uh, we'll try and get some information to you in the course of the service. Now it's also momentum for our young people, our teenagers, uh, at seven o'clock tonight online. So uh, young people, we're really looking forward to seeing you there. I'm not quite sure what's happening at momentum tonight, but it's always loud in our house at seven o'clock on a Sunday night. So uh, we know that they're always having lots of fun. And you'd have seen in the notices uh, this morning that you can still order your sweatshirts. Now I've ordered mine and it hasn't come yet so I am really looking forward to wearing it for church as soon as it arrives and showing you the amazing sweatshirts that the young people have designed and that we've had made so please do be getting your orders in for that. Now we know that today is Mothering Sunday and uh, I'm deliberately saying Mothering Sunday and not Mother's Day because Mothering Sunday traditionally is a time when we think about the Mother Church and it is actually particularly poignant today because today marks a year since the last time we had a gathered service in our building at 10 in the morning as the family of St John's all in church together. That was a whole year ago, everybody. What a crazy, crazy year this has been. Now, we know that Mothering Sunday can bring all kinds of different emotions for people. Uh, we know that it isn't necessarily an easy Sunday for people. Um, and actually in this week, that has been a week that on Monday of this week was International Women's Day. 
and uh, yesterday was a day marked with demonstrations against the tragic killing of a young woman in London. This has been a week that has been particularly poignant for women and maybe particularly hard uh, to be a woman in. And so we wanted to say, as St John's, we're going to be talking about this later, we wanted to acknowledge that we really value women and that we place high esteem on women of every age and stage and every life circumstance. And our hope, we've done our best, guys. If we've missed anybody, we are truly, truly sorry. But we have done our best this week to get a flower like this uh, as a gift from St John's to every woman in the church. So we really, really hope that you've got yours and that you've appreciated it. Like I say, if you haven't, um, huge, huge apologies and please let us know and we'll try and get, get you sorted out. But we really hope that they've gone to everyone and that they've uh, brightened your week and that these really pretty spring flowers can be a sign of hope in our gardens, that spring is coming and that a new day will soon be here. So, shall we turn our attention to praying together? Shall we pause? I often put my hands out when I pray as a sign that I am acknowledging my hands are empty but God's hands are full and God longs to meet with us this morning. He has so much to teach us of who he is. So let's take this opportunity to lay down our own agendas, lay down our cares, let go of the things that have been occupying our minds through this week and acknowledge that God is with us. The opening words of the Eucharistic prayer, I know that so many of you will know them well, they say the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts and we all say we lift them to the Lord. As we're here right now, we bring our hearts and we place them into the presence of God, God who is always with us, God who never leaves us or forsakes us. And we invite you, God, to show us your love, your power, your truth, your hope and your life this morning. We're so grateful for you. We're so grateful that you are always, always with us. Amen. So let's worship together now.
I had happy memories of the girls dancing at the front of church during that song and uh, I know that they might be a bit too big and grown up and too cool for school now for uh, dancing I don't know I hope not but um, I know that it will be one day soon we will be back in church and we'll be able to enjoy that physical being together in the space again now Alice Kilner is going to lead us in our all age slot. She put in the chat that she'd like us to have some plasticine or something like that. So I've got my Play-Doh all ready. I don't know what you're going to want us to make, Alice, but over to you. Thank you, Joy. I've got my, my Play-Doh here as well. So what do you use this for? What, what does anyone use their Play-Doh for? You just leave it in the tub. I know it goes really dry really quickly if you just leave it here. Um, would I still be able to play with it if it was left in the tub? How about this? Should we roll it into a ball? Then we could play catch. If you've got someone in your family, you could play, play catch with it. How about this? I wonder if we can make it into something useful. I, I think I'm going to have to do some practicing, but like a bowl? Oh, I know. Why don't you put some ideas in the chat of things that you might want to make with it? Or better still, if you've got your Play-Doh, show us on Zoom. I don't wonder what Joy's making. Has anyone else got Play-Doh? They can show us. What should we make? I could make a vase and put some flowers in for my mum. Or how about, I'm having fun now. Could do this all service. I could make a flower and it doesn't look like, much like a flower. I think I need more practice. What's anyone else making? So I've got another question for you. Did this Play-Doh do anything to make me use it? Did it tell me what it wanted to be? As I said, I could have just left it in its pot, all sealed up. But I think it would have gone very dry very quickly and then it wouldn't have been good to anybody. I could say that by grace I've saved this dough not because of anything that it did not because it told me to do it but because it's my gift to it. I didn't just take it out and leave it on the shelf because actually it's pretty ugly like that but I took it out to make it into something useful to play with it or to make a ball that I could play with my mum or my, my dad or my brother or my cousins. Like this ball. We could say that this Play-Doh was changed or a bigger word for changed is transformed into something useful. It's just Play-Doh. But real potters do this all the time. Is anyone watching Pottery Throwdown? We're loving it. They make it into cups out of clay, which is just really like Play-Doh. You and I are a bit like this dough. God takes us and saves us from wasting our lives and changes us into something useful. Not because of anything that we did, because we deserve to be changed, but because he loves and cares about us. Sounds a bit like our mums, they look after us. They don't give up on us, not because we do anything special, but because they love us. 
and I thought a bit ahead about what I was going to do with the Play-Doh in this service, so I had something to show you. And God has ideas about how he wants us to be. He has plans for us. And if we say yes to his plans, we make him happy and it makes us happy too. So I'd be love to see your ideas. Evelyn said a cup and Joy's making a rose. Why don't you show us in the service? Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Alice. We love Play-Doh in this house. It's uh, one of our absolute favourite fidget toys and uh, definitely when you're sitting on Zoom, it's good to have something to fiddle with, isn't it? Thank you. And absolutely true that God makes us and shapes us in so many different ways. Now, we are going to watch now a little uh, clip of some of the flowers like this uh, that went out to different people this week so I hope this will be a fantastic opportunity to see some pictures of uh, some different members of our church family who may be some faces that you've not seen for a while. everyone who helped in that and a massive massive round of applause to Brian and Jan Wilson who uh, coordinated all of the deliveries that I take my hat off to them because that has been a huge job and also for Suzanne on Wing Gardens organizing deliveries for Wing Gardens and Beck with her toddler mums people have worked really really hard this week behind the scenes and we're very very grateful so our young people are going to go into their breakout room now so um young people if you are uh, ready for your breakout group i think the opportunity is going to be offered to you in just a moment to go and talk about today's passage um so uh bless you young people i hope you have really fantastic conversations together for the rest of us, as we uh, stay in the service, we're going to be thinking about the family works and we're going to be talking to Andrea in a moment about the family works because we are now at the exciting point of being ready to recruit our first lot of mentors. But before we talk to Andrea, um, I would really love you to watch this short video which is going to explain a little bit more about the project and what it does and and we get the chance in this to hear from some people in Yeovil who've been running the project for a long time and who can tell you what it's really like to be involved in a project like this. So let's watch, shall we? Hi, I'm Rachel, founder of 4Family. 
Four Family is designed to help families to help themselves and um, it supports families by providing a link worker who can come alongside the family, get to know the family and also work with other organisations that might be supporting that family. So that could be schools, health visitors, it could be children's social care, a variety of different um, organisations and agencies and really what they are doing is to try and help that family to find solutions to the the things that are most challenging for that family. In addition to the link workers, um, For Family trains, equips and supports volunteer mentors to uh, meet with the family in the family home on a regular basis uh, to really listen to that family, to encourage them, to cheer them on because you know we all need a cheerleader in life don't we? And um, our vision at Four Family is that we want to see the tide of family breakdown turned wherever we serve. We want to see children who are growing up in, in families where the relationships are const constructive instead of uh, damaging and, and destructive. And we'd love to be able to see whole communities transformed because of uh, the support we've been able to, to bring. And um, we want to see hope restored and we want to see people able to see that life can be better. So we'd love you to be part of this journey. We'd love you to be part of a journey that sees uh, families moving from surviving to thriving, from that experience of despair to being in that place of hope. We'd love you to join us on this exciting journey. Hi, my name's Alan and I've been a volunteer mentor at Yeovil Family since 2014. And if it's something you're considering, I would strongly recommend and encourage you. You'll find the training is excellent and it really does equip you for this voluntary role. And once you've been trained, uh, you'll be able to be matched with a person to be able to mentor them and then you'll be able to go ahead and meet them perhaps in their own home, maybe in a coffee shop, perhaps in another safe space, go for a walk, and then use those skills that you've learned and those life skills that we all acquire and perhaps underestimate to be able to encourage, support and help the person you're mentoring navigate the challenges that they're facing and build um, them into uh, a more robust situation where they will be able to cope better. And not only cope, but see that life can be better in the months and hopefully years ahead. And you'll find it hugely rewarding too. So all the best. Hi, I'm Andrea, the Programme Coordinator for The Family Works. It's been a really tough year for everyone, but post pandemic, we've seen a lot of our families in our community really struggling. The Family Work Support Programme is our way of being able to respond to that need by offering positive relationships and love. We're really excited to begin training our first cohort of family mentors who will walk the journey together with our families, offering time to listen, support and hope. It's our hope that we will help families to transform their lives, empowering them for a better future. To do this, we really need your help. If you feel like this is something that you could get involved with, then please get in touch. Thank you. Amazing. Well, so that's a preview for everyone of um, a little bit of what's been going on behind the scenes. I hope you uh, like the, the the kind of branding for uh, the project. Um, and uh, we're going to get Andrea up now, and you can uh, we can ask Andrea some questions. So, uh, hello, Andrea. It's great to see you. Um, we, we've been obviously close up to all of the preparation for um, 
video today, but I still got goosebumps when I was watching it. So uh, it, it was great to see and, and hear some of the reality of what's been happening in Yeovil and what we're really hoping to bring up here and, and get established in Sheffield. So we're asking people to really pray and consider whether God is calling them to volunteer as family mentors. We're asking people to think about that this week and to consider whether that's that's something that they want to do. Um, can you tell us a little bit more, what exactly does being a family mentor involve? Well, simply put, um, it's a commitment of two hours per week. Um, the first hour is actually spent with one of our families when they are matched. Um, the second hour is then spent feeding back and being supported by their link worker. Um, because obviously our family mentors are our key products. So they're, they're just as important as everybody else. We need to make sure that they've got the right support. Um, again, there's lots of training involved. Like Alan said, the training is, is quite intense, but it's so rigorous and so supportive. Um, and I think we can offer them a really supportive team. I mean, we're not called family works for nothing. We are, we work, you know, it's about supporting the families, but we are a family that would support others. So the, like I said, the first commitment is that two hours per week. And what will, what will family mentors be doing when they're with the family? Um, the idea, the, the first thing that they will be doing is listening pure and simply listening, building relationships with all of the family. So whether they have children, young children, older children, whether they're single parent families or mixed families, it doesn't matter. It's just about building relationship. Um, it's not about going in and tidying and washing pots and doing the shopping or trying to fix things. It's simply about listening, it's about relationship in there absolutely building relationship now that sounds exciting well we're hoping to recruit uh, 10 family mentors in the first instance and get those people trained and ready to be out working with families hopefully by the end of June of this year um, now I know that people often downplay their skills they say oh that means so, such and such a person would be really really great at being a family mentor but I'm not sure that I've got the right skills and gifts um, what exactly is it that we're looking for in our family mentors what, what kind of mix of skills and gifts are we asking? oh gosh i mean i was that person when we talked about doing this the family works and the program coordinator and could i do that you you kind of think well there's a checklist of skills that i need it's not about that it's about um are you good at listening first and foremost um have you had experience with young children so if you've got a family of your own absolutely brilliant life experience we've all and especially this last year we will have all had that um tough time um or times to celebrate and i think it's just about sharing all of that um we like i said we're not trying to, to fix people it's just about giving time so if you're in, a, in a, a stage in your life where you think you could spare that time to give back to share um to, to smile, to that you're calm, that you, yeah, you, you, you're just somebody that could relate to other people, then please, this job is for you. <laughs> we're, really, we're really excited about uh, seeing people flourish in that role as well and having an yeah. opportunity to use their skills and gifts. So what is particularly exciting for you about the project right now? Oh, gosh. Um, I think, uh, gosh, I've really thought about what excites me about this. Um, it's hope. It's the hope. Um, I always remember, as um, even from being a little girl, and then in my, my kind of work history, um, I've always wanted to what make things better for families, but I've always wondered why, you know, I really wanted them to have the passion for Jesus that I do. So I think 
my excitement about this is that um, I can't do this. We, we as human beings can't do this, but Jesus can make this difference with these families. Um, and it's, it's a chance for us to share him, to share his love, to share with people, to make changes. Um, I've been really listening to um, a worship song a lot lately. Um, can, can I just read some lyrics from it? Is that all right? It's called, um, it's called I Speak Jesus. Um, and basically it just starts with, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break, declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Um, I think the song says it a lot better than I could. And I just think the thing that excites me is that we will be able to get into homes with these families to share this, to share the hope, um, you know, to, to walk that journey. I mean, our slogan says walking the journey together. Um, and that's what excites me the most. That's amazing. And that, that is truly, truly an exciting opportunity to be able to journey with people and share who Jesus is and, and his love as we walk with people. Absolutely. Now, if people are watching this and thinking that they want to get involved, what, what do they need to do next? OK, um, we have now got a timeline and we are going to start doing our training. So there is now a window of two weeks. So we've got until, uh, well, from now for the next two weeks, if you are interested, you need to send me an email. And I know Caleb's got the slide kind of on loop. It's Andrea at thefamilyworks.co.uk. And that's just, that's an expression of interest email from that. I will then send a pack out that details all of the next steps. It is quite an intense process, um, but then that's because we want to offer the right support for our family mentors as well. So you've got this window of two weeks. Please, please get in touch. Absolutely. We really want to hear from you. Uh, we're going to pray in a moment, so just stay on. Uh, Andrea, I think we'll put your email address in the chat as well so that people can contact you. Uh, but let's uh, also, we want to also to let church know, um, so far we are trying to fund uh, the Family Works entirely through grant making trusts. <laughs> we have been on a real journey of uh, trying to get funding and and we have had some funding so far which has been absolutely wonderful but we still really really need to raise some more money to get this project off the ground so we really would like to invite the church to get behind this and uh, with with that in mind, we're going to launch a gift day. Now, I'm going to give you more specifics about that next week. Um, but we really want to make sure that we're able, as a church, to put our money where our mouth is and get behind this project. So uh, if you remember, last year we had a gift day in February, just before uh, lockdown kicked in, and we raised money for our youth work and our work on wind gardens now that has been absolutely invaluable across this last year and uh, we're so grateful for the ways that people give regularly to church we we absolutely uh, need the, the the giving that people give to be able to do the mission and, and the work of the church but there are times when we also need to think over and above uh, what, what we give as our regular giving and with that in mind we are going to be launching a gift day for the family works in the not too distant future so please watch this space and be praying and considering how you can support. We'd love your prayer support. We'd love your financial support if you're able. And we'd love you to get on board as a family mentor if that's something that you feel God is just stirring you about this morning. So shall we pray? Uh, I'm going to pray now. I'm going to pray for Andrea. I'm going to pray for the uh, programme. But I'm also going to pray for those who are going to be mentors who may not know it yet. So let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you go out to seek and to save those who don't know you. 
we thank you that you are intimately interested in and connected to every family that are currently asking questions and searching and having challenges in their day-to-day -day life. We thank you that you are the God who sees and the God who knows. And we pray that as the Family Works develops, you would enable us to be sent by you to walk alongside families where extra support is needed. We pray that we would see your kingdom come and your will be done as this programme develops. We pray for Andrea and uh, the, the wider team who are setting up this project and who are trying to ensure that everything is in place for it to grow and flourish. Pray that you would have your hand on each person involved in that work and bless them. But we also pray for all those who are going to be the mentors in this programme. People who are feeling a little stir of your Holy Spirit this morning, wondering if they've got the time, wondering if it's something that you could use them in. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would confirm that call in many hearts this morning. So we ask you, uh, Lord, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can dream or imagine, to provide and to demonstrate once again your love and power in this work. We offer it all to you because it is all yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Andrea, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. It's been great to see you and fabulous to hear about how the programme is taking place and taking shape. Okay, so over to Ken now, who is going to read our Bible reading, Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Good morning, Ken. Hello. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, and now we're going to go over to Chris, who is going to speak to us from that passage this morning. So good morning, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Let's pray. God of light and hope, we ask that you please come now and shine the light of your truth and hope upon us, opening our hearts and minds to your word for us and guiding my words to your purpose. Amen. My garden is full of daffodils. Spring is finally here. Restrictions are hopefully 
slowly lifting and before too long we'll be able to meet with family and friends once more. Can't wait. At last we can begin to feel a bit more alive and hopeful. Hallelujah to that. However, are we truly alive? In the reading we've just heard from Ephesians 2, Paul hammers home the assertion that sin results in spiritually dead people. And if we're spiritually dead, we are de facto incapable of helping ourselves. The Bible teaches us that while we were in this state, God reached down from heaven, sending his beloved son to redeem us and offering us complete forgiveness and renewal of our relationship with him through grace and grace alone. In him, we have eternal life. We are made alive in Christ. Sadly, this doesn't mean that our struggles with sin are at an end. Far from it. Grace does not make us perfect. So we still struggle with sin in its many forms. However, through grace, we continue to receive forgiveness each time that we confess and repent of our sins. And we are then given the strength to go on trying to be more Christ-like. And all of this is God's gift to us, his loving, merciful gift which we don't and never can earn. But in this material world of ours, how real is sin to us? Do we truly recognize its reality and consequences? Or is it something we prefer to push aside and not think about? Do we recognize that the devil is still prowling around like a hungry lion, looking for souls to claim as his? Or do we categorize the devil with myths and legends, stories to scare naughty children? Perhaps now might be a good time to go and put on the kettle or get out that Play-Doh again. Um, that is if you're averse to facing hard truths and talk of sin and the devil. But before you do, just remember that rather like the COVID vaccine, it might be a bit uncomfortable but it is essential for our present and our future health and well-being. The loving mothers and mother figures whom we celebrate today have had to be tough and a bit stern at times if their beloved children are to grow into healthy, happy and well-balanced human beings. They've needed to be able to love those children dearly, yet recognise their faults and failings and help them to overcome them and to guide them to make the right choices in life. Just as our loving Heavenly Father does with us, his precious children. For every choice we make and action we take has consequences. And we all need to understand this from an early age. And the Bible makes this very clear. In Romans 6 verse 23, it tells us that the wages or consequences of sin are death. I've long been a fan of C.S. Lewis, who, besides being a great advocate for Christianity, approaches such difficult issues as sin, death and the devil with such wit and logic and vivid imagery that the reader is carried along with him. One of his great classics is the screw tape letters, where a senior devil is training a junior devil in the subtleties of temptation of humans. The reader is presented with the reality of an evil force perpetually intent on robbing the human race of the full life for which we were made. The main aim of this force is not to entrap us into spectacular evils and great sins, but into little ones which encourage, encourage us to do what pleases us rather than God, in selfishness rather than in helping and thinking of others, 
or into doing things that we don't even recognize as being actually evil, but are simply an absence of good. And it's also to feed us lies, lies about ourselves and about our true standing as beloved children of God. In Mere Christianity, Lewis states, it doesn't matter how small the sins are, provided that the cumulative effect is to edge the man or woman away from the light and out into nothing. If you're tempted to scoff at the concept of the devil and his minions tempting us away from our Lord, then look again at Jesus's words in the Bible in John 10, verse 10, where he says, the thief, in other words, the devil, only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. And if we look again at verses one and two of our reading from Ephesians, it says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. We know Jesus himself was tempted by the devil at the beginning of his ministry and often alluded to the work of the evil one and the reality of hell. However uncomfortable the concept, we only have to read Luke 16 verses 19 to 31, where Jesus tells the parable of the rich man and the beggar Lazarus to know that hell and eternal damnation are real. However, we need to approach, be balanced in our approach, neither giving the devil too much recognition nor dismissing him altogether. In his preface to the Screwtape Letters, Lewis sums this up quite neatly, I think. He says, there are two equal and opposing errors into which our race can fall about devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. That said, we can take courage from the fact that on the cross, Jesus purchased our forgiveness, redemption and victory over sin and the devil. So we can be awake to the reality of the devil and his works, not be taken in by his lies and stand firm against them in the light of our Lord's love and redeeming grace. And our reading gives us further courage and hope. In verses eight and nine, Paul states in boldest terms that we are saved by grace alone and not by works. There's absolutely nothing we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing we can boast about in terms of our standing with God. Grace is so powerful that it can forgive all sin and frequently does. However, it doesn't end there. In wiping out a person's sinful past, grace also opens up a whole new future. As Paul goes on to say in verse 10, grace brings nothing short of a new creation. Everything in a person's life is affected, bringing about a transformation resulting in the good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. All those gifts of the Spirit. This also reminds us of what our response should be to such love. For though good deeds cannot earn us grace or a place in God's kingdom, they should be our response to being made new and given new life in Christ. So for each of us here as individuals, each on our own unique journey, what does this mean? What response is God calling forth in each of us? Is there a special task he has for us? Maybe being a mentor for our family works program, who knows? Do we sense him prompting us to serve in some specific way? Or is there some other change that he wants in our lives? habits we need to break, 
some way of making him more central to what we are and what we do. Some lies of the devil that we need to dismiss for what they are. But that said, we do need to be wary. There's so much need in this world, so many ways in which we can serve our loving Father, that it's quite easy to try to do too much and find ourselves overstretched, resulting in our quiet time spent in our Lord's presence being crowded out by other things, leaving us spiritually under-resourced. That's a big pit pitfall for committed Christians to be busy for the Lord, but yet to fa fail to spend time with the Lord. And something I think that many of us can identify with. So with that in mind, I'd like to invite you to take some time now to rest in God's presence, to listen to what he has to say to you, to let his Holy Spirit fill you anew as you reflect on his love and grace. So we're going to have a time of silence. I'm going to begin with a prayer and then with a couple of words at the end before handing back to joy. So let's pray. Loving Father, as we contemplate your love for each of us and your amazing gift of grace and new life in Christ, we thank and praise you. Our hearts overflow with the wonder of all that this means for us. And we open ourselves now to your presence. Amen. Amen. May we each go into the week ahead filled with the grace of our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Chris, for that. It's good, isn't it, just to have a time of quiet and a space to reflect. Really appreciated that this morning. Thank you. Okay, we're going to sing our final song now, and then we're going to spend some time in prayer. So we're going to sing How We Love Your Name. Let's um, remember the name of Jesus and the power that that holds.
Mike and Beck Ackroyd, who are going to lead us in our prayers. Morning. Shall we pray? Good morning. We come before you today to ask for your protection over our families. We may not be with our families as much as we would like particularly during the last 12 months. But we thank you, Lord, are always with them. We pray that you use your peace and protection. Dear God, we commit to you those in our families who have fallen sick. We believe that you are healer, our great physician. May you be the comfort of our family members who are physically in pain right now. Loving Father, so ask that you heal the members of our families who are hurting emotionally. Give them the peace that transcends understanding. Heal their hearts, Lord. Clear their minds of any doubt, anxiety or depression. Renew in them a peaceful spirit, Lord. 
We also pray that you would restore any bonds that have been broken with our family members. We ask your Holy Spirit to surround us with your love, that it may overflow and that we may share it with our families. Allow us to be instruments of your blessings to them. We are so thankful, God, for the good times we have with our families. Thank you for allowing us to enjoy each other's company. Lord, you are our Prince of Peace and the one that guards our hearts. May you always remind us to be peacemakers, especially within our families. May our homes be a sanctuary of blessing, comfort and love for each one of us. All these things we pray in your holy name, Lord. Amen. Loving God, you set the lonely in families. We thank you for families of all shapes and sizes, immediate or extended, nuclear or blended, related by blood, or united by love. We thank you for the gift of children, for their limitless potential, their boundless energy, and their constant curiosity. Above all, we thank you for adopting us into your family and for joining us all together with eternal bonds that go deeper than biology. May our experience of your perfect love increase our prayerful commitment to families and children. Compassionate God, you hear the cries of the widow and the orphan. We pray for children and families whose lives have been marked by trauma, neglect and loss. We pray that they would know that they are seen by you and are precious to you. We ask that you provide for children who are still waiting for safe, loving home. And we pray too for the birth families of children who are no longer with them, for parents who have lost a child, and for those who have suffered childlessness and comfort of your presence. Faithful Father to the fatherless. We all who care for vulnerable children in their homes, adoptive parents and foster carers. May they know your companionship and we pray for the many professionals who provide vital support for vulnerable children and families, including social workers, teachers and carers. We ask that you would bless them in their work. We pray for those who make decisions on their behalf. Grant them your wisdom and compassion. God of justice, you call your people to take up the cause of vulnerable children and families. We pray that as your people, we would be a welcoming and supportive community for vulnerable children, families, for those who care for them. We pray for the work of the Family Works Project. We pray for the team that you would guide. We pray for people to catch this vision and play an active part in caring for vulnerable local families. We ask that this ministry would bear fruit that will last. Amen. Amen. Wow, I'm blown away by those prayers. So, so powerful. And uh, please do be praying for Beck and her team this week as Beck will be starting the non-mobile baby group up, socially distanced with lots and lots of precautions back in church on Tuesday morning. So do hold uh, all of those families in your prayers too. 
So we're at the end of our service now and I'm shortly going to read a prayer over us and uh, pray a prayer of blessing. Uh, we've got our Zoom coffee groups in just five minutes so please do join us, please stay on the call if you're here so that uh, we can have a coffee together and catch up and share one another's news. It has been such a delight to worship with you this morning. I'm going to read a prayer from this book um, edited by Sarah Bessie, A Rhythm of Prayer, and this is a prayer to learn to love the world again. God of herons and heartbreak, teach us to love the world again. Teach us to love extravagantly, knowing it may, it will break our hearts, and teach us that it is worth it. God of pandemics and suffering ones, teach us to love the world again. God of loneliness and longing, of bushfires and wilderness, of soup kitchens and border towns, of snowfall and children, teach us to love the world again. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those who you love this day and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.